yeah, yeah. I'm start this. Rappers are monkey flipping with the funky rhythm. I be kicking, musician, inflicting composition of pain. I'm like Scarface sniffing cocaine. At a park jam, you hit a record, it does something crazy to you. You know, I was young enough to be out there, you know, with all the stuff that was going down out there. But after the park jam was over, you just had memories. What it felt like, what you thought you heard the rapper say, or how you thought the DJ presented the record, but when you had a chance to have it on cassette, then you could sit there and, and really study it. Man, you no, know, making the tapes is a process. You have to know what time the radio show starts because you're recording off the radio. You have to switch all the way down from one dial, and if nothing's happening on KISS, you try to speed to BLS, and then somebody might call you. You hear what they playing on KISS? Damn! And then you speed right back to KISS, but the song already started, so you missed the intro, but then you press record anyway. After you got the whole song, you couldn't make the mistake of recording over it. I used to put paper in the cassette. Then there could be a time where they might stop playing a record for a, a week. And you, like, you're gonna die if you don't hear this record. If you don't record this record by next Friday, your whole month is messed up. Uh, it started with messing with my parents' radio, but we messed it up. So we was able to mess with the clock radio. But that didn't have a cassette player. So we just waiting to one day get a uh, radio with a cassette player. Well, my other friends' fathers was dope fiends and criminals, career criminals. My pop was the only dude that was going to Europe and Asia, coming back with money in his pocket from something that he created, something that started with him playing instruments. He always told me, you know, he's his own boss. He don't punch in the clock doing something he don't want to do. Just said, you know, I had two great parents. They just pushed it in me, you know, do, do right. I think my first one was this like silver one cassette deck radio. My favorite joint, it was 10 watts. And the watts was important. Like, you know, you judge a radio, yo, how many watts you guys got? Hell. After that, if you get a dual cassette, you can then create the tape you want from all these cassettes, these songs that are all over the place on all these different 90-minute tapes, 60-minute tapes, whatever. The whole idea was to try to have the longest tape. I had my tapes that I could let somebody borrow the dub, and then I'd have the tapes that were so good that you have to come to my house to dub it. What I did was have a tape for me and my crew. When you play it back with your people, some people will notice that the track, the beat is crazy. Some people will notice that the rhymes is crazy, but then you have a whole crew of your friends that's sitting there picking it apart and putting it back together. And that's how you really start to study the whole art of writing, producing, and DJing. The difference in the cassette in today's digital world is with the cassette, you can put the cassette up to your nose and smell the tape. It had a smell, it was like, it was wild. And if it ever popped and you pulled it out, the material the tape was made out of, you can kind of stare at it. One side is brown, the other end is black. And you stare at it, it's like there's sound on that. And, and, and it smells, if you touch it, you could probably kind of rub it on your fingers. You're thinking like, damn, this is science. This is serious. It was everything, the batteries, if they start dying, you put them in a the freezer. I don't know if that worked to this day, but for some reason we thought if you put them in a the freezer, you would recharge them. You have an antenna broke, you, you know how to fix that. The, the cassette door could break, but you knew how to throw it in. You can hear when your tape starts speeding up, you better stop it before it pops. That was just a whole lifestyle that's gone. A lot of times it would be Coogee Rap, it's a demo. Ultra Magnetic MCs, Marley Maul, MC Shan, some early tribe, um, some Jungle Brothers, really more than early tribe. This was early then. This was before there was tribe. Shinehead was somebody I remember. Yellow Man, of course, Bob Marley. Reggae music is New York all day. Queen, we will rock you. To me, it's a hip hop record. The Mary Jane girls, you know, um, I thought they were great. Cool J Records, his first single, I Need a Beat, and then MC Shan's Beat Biter when he talked about him. Roxanne Chante, Craig G, artists from my neighborhood where I grew up, Queensbridge Project. You had to have themes, you know what I'm saying? We had the big radio, 
and we would time it so that it, certain songs would be on by the time we walked through 10th Street or 12th Street or the 41st side, then all the way back to the 40th side. You know, we walked through the block with a certain song that represented us. And if you start some shit, your ass had bet to run, cause you're in the bridge. That, that song is like, it's about the park jams, how it got too violent, how don't start nothing out there. He shouted out some names of the guys that been doing it out there before him. But the last verse had nothing to do with that. The last verse was his, his like MLK's dream speech. You know what I'm saying? His, his last verse, his style on it already, he starts with one tone when he starts the sentence and ends in another tone. That, that wasn't done before. And um, he said, dead dreams are bored and soul. You gotta try to reach your goal. However you do it, however you may, don't never listen to what somebody say. Like he didn't have to put that verse in there. He was good with shouting out Shantae and shouting out Jappy Jack. He, he, he took it you know, serious. He took the neighborhood serious. So that, that touched everybody, young and old, you know? It burns me up that I don't have those cassettes no more, like the concerts at Madison Square Garden, Fresh Fest, Boogie Down Productions, live. There was one, go back for you, Curtis Blow live. And I had it on cassette. And you know, he was my favorite rapper, right? He was live and he was singing, cause he can sing. We wanted to hear the rap records, and, and me included. And he told the crowd, y'all don't want me to sing? I don't care, I'm gonna sing anyway. Even though I was taping it, I remember him, and I'm like, damn, how could he say that to the audience who loves him? He's like, I don't care what y'all wanna hear, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna keep, I'm gonna keep singing. The history is heavy because I remember, like KRS once said, it isn't even 20 years old. 50 years down the line, we can start this because we'll be the old school artist, and even in that time, I'll say a rhyme. What he did back then, today is unheard of. He wasn't just there for the check, he was there to enlighten us all about the culture. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I made a mixtape now, it'd be a lot of Scarface on it, it'd be a lot of Outkast on it, a lot of random cuts off of Cool J albums like Panther album, like Nitro. Lyrics of Fury by Rakim, Minute Work by Kooji Rap, the real lyrical stuff, some of the modern stuff, some of the stuff that's out there by, say, maybe Plies or whoever's new who's saying who got a song that really stick out to me, you know? Probably won't be the hits, but it'd be the, the, the strong album cuts. There's a time where you're finally about to see um, hip-hop artists really have careers. And most of the guys that were from the cassette days are gone. They paved the way, they passed the torch for all of us. I'm blessed to have those memories.